so coming to uh, today's questions, recall questions, let us quickly go through. So identify the part of the cochlear implant marked. So this was the uh, part of the cochlear implant map and this is the reference or grounding electrode that has been uh, marked, asked in the in your MCQ. And you know, this is the processor and this is the transmitter, receiver, stipulator, electrode array in the cochlea and uh, this is your reference or grounding electrode. The least important one is asked, right? And coming to the, a female singer with hoarseness of voice, unable to sing higher frequency notes, bowed and depressed unilateral vocal cord is seen, which muscle is involved. So the vocal cord is bowed. Vocal cord is bowed means tension in the vocal cord is lost. Tension in the vocal cord is lost means Tensor muscle is affected. What is the tensor muscle? Cricothyroid. And rest are posterior cricothyroid is abductor, thyroarytenoid and arytenoid are your adductors. And investigation of choice for juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is obviously CECT. Why CE contrast enhanced CT scan? This is a vascular tumor and this the vascular tea, the contrast will be uptaken here. So definitely it is very important to be uh, to take this vascularity. Just a second. Yes. So as it is a vascular tumor, so if you give contrast, the contrast will be uptaken and you can see the uptake in the uptake of the vascular uh, contrast here. So that in, uh, that gives you that this is a vascular tumor. So investigation of choice for JNA is always contrast based the CT or MRI, preferably CT more than MRI. And identify the blocked structure. See here, this is the maxillary antrum completely filled with nasal polyp and this is growing into the middle meatus area. And the complex here, you call it as ethmoidal infantibulum along with your bulla and your ancient three together are mixed together are called as osteomeatal complex. So the blocked structure is osteomeatal complex, right? And uh, identify the condition based on this image. You can see the dextrocardia situs inversus here and this is very clearly seen in Cartagena syndrome where uh, recurrent sinusitis and bronchiectasis are also seen associated. And the best stain for biopsy during laryngoscopy for vocal cord examination is you stain it with toluidine blue and this is called as supravital staining. There itself you can stain. This is much well taken by your DNA and RNA elements and uh, if there is increased uptake, you can suspect some carcinoma there. Okay. And uh, tracheal deviation is given on the x-ray and which is difficult. Among the given options, tracheostomy is the nearest answer. Among the even intubation may be difficult, but among the given options, tracheostomy is not that difficult. But if you have to choose one option from among the given options, tracheostomy is difficult. Okay. On head impulse test for a left vestibular neuritis patient, saccade will be in which direction? So there was a lot of controversy going on from morning. So it is a hypoactive lesion and it will be towards the opposite side. So right on left head rotation. No problem. All this content will be given to you in the, again, regular uh, uh, repeat MCQ video. It will be given in the app. And the narrow supply of pinna matching question was given. And see, the antero superior part of the pinna is supplied by your auriculotemporal nerve. And the concha part will be supplied by your facial and vagal branches. Arnold's nerve and your uh, Risberg's nerve. And the entire remaining area is supplied by greater auricular nerve. So this is a well-known, very easy question, right? So accordingly, you can match and identify the sign shown on X-ray. If it is a button battery, you can see the double ring sign. So hopefully this was given in your exam. So double ring sign was the answer. If it is a coin, you don't find. Both the cases, the coin is in the esophagus, not in the trachea. Okay. If it is in the trachea, you will see the side of the coin because vocal cords are aligned anterior to posterior. And there is a vertical anterior to posterior slit in the airway. So the coin will lodge in that way, not this way, right? And in a prolonged intubation patient, following is seen. What is seen? Subglottic stenosis is seen. So prolonged intubation. That's why in prolonged intubation, you need to convert it to tracheostomy. But if it is continuously, the cuff may put pressure. High pressure cuffs if used, they will cause this subglottic stenosis. And Cotton-Meyer grading is given for this subglottic stenosis, right? On the promontory, behind the tympanic membrane, there is a red mass. CT is given. CT clearly shows Phelps sign, absence of carotico jugular spine. So that is clearly a case of glomus jugulaire. So many of you may be asking, it is on the promontory. The tumor may grow from below, erode the floor, 
and come to lie in the middle ear on the promontory. So it is a case of glomus jugular. The question does not say that the tumor is arising from the promontory. It is lying on the promontory. Indication for this incision. This is an incision used for open rhinoplasty approach. And this is your Caldwell look where maxillary sinus is uh, contents are cleared. And uh, this is your mid-facial degloving approach where extensive angiofibromas can be removed with this approach. Right? Perforation. Yes. If I give and spell polypus and most of your types of sorry. Most of yeah. Perforation in tympanic membrane. So whenever there is a perforation in tympanic membrane, Rene will be negative. If, uh, and if there is a lesion in the external auditory canal, tympanic membrane, and middle ear, that there will be conductive hearing loss and the renew will be negative. If there is a lesion in the cochlea and auditory nerve, there will be sensory neural hearing loss, renew will be positive there. So perforation in tympanic membrane will give a conductive hearing loss and renew will be negative, right? And uh, septal perforation caused due to surgery of submucous resection. Okay, during submucous resection, in between the two nasal mucosal flaps, where the usual bony septum is there, cartilaginous and bony septum, you remove this septum and you just put, put the flaps together. You do not replace the removed septum. So what happens if there is any mucosal tear, there a perforation may occur and a through and through perforation can happen. So that you can see as a complication of uh, this one, submucous resection used for done for deviated nasal septum. Audiogram of a patient is given. So what does this audiogram is showing? It is showing a Carhartt's notch. So where do you find this Carhartt's notch? You will find this in otosclerosis. So find the sign that can be seen in the same case. So wait, what do you see here? Squat sign, a reddish hue, which is seen on the promontory, right? Through the intact tympanic membrane. So if you have any doubts, do, do message me personally and uh, I will get them rectified and I will uh, again post it as a uh, permanent regular video, right?